gave you some freedom. Now you can go to school. You're getting some freedom. Now you can go to music school. And you can learn how to write down the music so that everyone can sing the songs of the people. And so you're just writing down the music. Nobody knows. Still away. Omar's moving every day. I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. We just keep on moving, keep on moving to the light. Because this is the end of my life. Anything that you go through in your life, you gotta go to song. 
You got a go-to song that can be kind of lifted. Just have a young people in here. I know you got a go-to song, but yours might be Get Hip. Get Hip. And I know about that, right? I know about that. But that still takes you to a different place. So what I wanted to do right now was just kind of take you on a journey. And the way that African American music has led the way. And how it continues to lead the way. So I ask you and I implore you, don't forget about the scriptures. Don't forget about the songs of the forefathers. Because there is strength in them. There is knowledge in them. There is foundation in them. So I guess I have probably talked more than 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop because when I can stand up here a whole nother hour because that's the way I love it. That's the way I present it to students. That's the way I present it to whoever. But I think you went on that journey with me. Did you go on that journey with me? festival saying to me that Sister Jenkins and her team and everything that everyone does for this wonderful organization is rooted in what I talked about. Is it woven in? There is that famous quilt and it's woven in. So I thank you for listening to my spiritual story. I know you thought I was just going to stand here and just sing I thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you much. Invite me again. I'll be glad to come. Thank you. Thank you. Someone to help. sharing knowledge, information about where you come from and who you are as a people. And I chose a gospel song because I chose one that gives an audience an opportunity to hear my story today. Jesus is a friend of mine. Would y'all help me out a little bit? I'm going to start with a little bit.
The next thing I want to do is congratulate uh, uh, Sister Jenkins and her staff uh, for the dream of day that was started 20 years ago. And, and I know for a fact some dropped out of the side. But, but that, that, was enough, that was enough spirit in her and enough drive in her to continue the San Diego Family Heritage Association uh, into its 20th year. And I do believe that the, the future is brighter because of her persistence and because of her committee uh, persistence. But uh, a sister, uh, Denise, offered a scripture. And I would like to offer this one from John 1 and 46. It says this, Nathan said to them, Did anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. I'd like to paraphrase that. Can anything good come out of Spring Lake? You bet your bottle out. <laughs> Sister Payton, Brother Chase, uh, Spray Lake uh, produced doctors and lawyers, military and general and personnel. And uh, so we have a deal here that we are not going to sit on and we're not going to hide any longer because a lot of great things have come out of Spray Lake during the year. And uh, one more thing, I know I'll be up in about uh, three minutes. I also found an African proverb says this, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. 20 years ago, Miss Jenkins had uh, that drink, and she began to make preparations. And uh, if you all don't know the struggle, then sit down with me and talk to her about the struggle that, uh, that she and the committee uh, uh, went through. Uh, whether it's financial, whether it's support, whether somebody just stopped and buy, buy some collard greens or some turnips. When the, uh, when the farmer's market was there on Chapel Hill Road. So keep it up, uh, Sister Jenkins. She is a pioneer in her own right. And when you know her story and read her story, you will see exactly uh, uh, what the scriptures reveal. Something good in the form and in the body of Miss Jenkins came out of Spring Lake.
learned about how to, how to work with the forester and get a tree on your life. They've learned to say, you know what? If some guy comes in and says, oh, hey, dear, I'll give you $600 cash for your trees, but you know that those trees are probably worth at least $60,000, not $600. You know, it was about building on the strengths, building on the culture, building on the wisdom and the knowledge that your ancestors passed down. And along the way, Sand Hills Family Heritage Association has created space for the next generation of leaders. Sometimes there were things between the elders and the younger folks. You know, and they're like, whoa, ooh, maybe. <laughs> and the younger folks learn to work with the elders, and the elders learn to work with the developers, which is something that your elders taught you and your ancestors taught you. Above all, what has been done in the last 20 years is the community has developed. Community was already there. But it's been strengthened. It's been brought together around what are we making? What do we want together? It's not about I want to be out in front. No, no, no. I'm going to be too. It's about how can we build community together? It's about us. It's about our families, our future, and our present day. So today, I would just say we're going to celebrate. The work of the Sand Hills Family Heritage Association. Miss Amy has been there forever. Neither she or I had any gray hair back when we started doing this. <laughs> um, but all the staff, all the board members, all the thousands of volunteer hours, like the probably millions of volunteer hours at this point, that have been put into bringing everybody coming together. We've lost some folks, and that's been sad. But you know what? They are surviving their own right now because you have carried on what they started, and the ancestors are smiling on you. Congratulations to Sand Hills Family. That's it. They're truly special people. So we thank you. Thank you so very much. It's Brenda Hannah Bloom here. Brenda Bloom is going to tell us about the food pantry um, ministry and that partnership. I know that we're able to do the things that we do because there are so many people doing things. Working together, there's no way in the world to stand in two people can do it. So please come forward. Thank you. Y'all 20 years in, so y'all are already adults. 
uh, but we're the babies in the family. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to uh, Partnerships are like relationships. That we have to appreciate one another, become stronger. Doing that builds stronger communities, something beyond ourselves. Becoming that beloved community that we just talked about, that we all learn to be a part of, where there is no line but division, but there's just care and concern for everybody that we encounter. That kind of wraps up what the mission of Sand Hill uh, Family Heritage really is. This partnership allowed, it allowed for weekly, monthly, and quarterly group distributions, resources, workshops, and networking. We found uh, uh, Mrs. Pratt, I, I, the email, now I have a face to the name, uh, um, that has helped with so many resources and allowed our young people to be a part of making this world just a little bit better. I don't know about any of you, but when uh, a family can go to sleep with one less worry, with one less child hungry, with one less mother or father struggling, I don't know about you, but that's a great impact that I want to be a part of. Continuing with this partnership, relationship strengthens our reach to more people to make this world just a little bit kinder and a little bit brighter. It is let us continue to support one another in this endeavor, which is a stepping stone with San Diego's family heritage, where we can have healthier communities, stronger families, and make this world just a little more loving. We may not be able to help everyone, but everyone can help someone. So I just want us just to celebrate San Diego because they allow each one of us to help someone. So let's give them a round of applause.
I am honored to stand before you. To be a newest member, to be a part of this, this illustrious organization. There's an African proverb that I really thought was fitting for this event, and it says, dreams are related to the past, but connected to the future. Spring Lake has been very, very connected with the San Jose Family Heritage Association, and I want to pledge to each and every one of you that we will continue the support. We will continue to work together with all the members of the San Jose Family Heritage Association to ensure that the missions of this organization are carried out, to make sure that we are providing whatever resources and necessities that are needed for this organization to move forward, and to uplift the rich heritage that is connected to this land right here in Spring Lake. I am so proud of what has happened um, with the thrust state legislators acknowledging Representative Lucas for the work that they have done to make sure that we can revitalize our city. It has such an illustrious heritage, and I cannot wait for us to really be able to get in there and do some of the things that were done before. I hear the stories of from people like Mayor Goddard of, of what has happened in the Civic Center. And I cannot wait to be able to stand on those grounds, honoring our ancestors and those who put their blood, sweat, and tears into that land to bring it to life. It's up to us to sustain that life, to continue the mission of those who built that land or built that building. Thank you again to each and every one of you. Ms. Ami, I am honored to, that you, you reached out for me to come here today, and I am so, so excited to see where this, this uh, organization is going to go, the things that we're going to break this great lake, and I pledge our support. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor elect Anthony. We are excited to uh, know that we will continue to have that support from you as well as others. It is now time for us to uh, dine. I'm going to ask the COVID team, and I think Doris, so if you can get Doris, uh, Lucas, please. Mr. Lyle Smith will ask that you lift the grace for us. Lyle. Lyle is also. Long time, say grace for us, please. He's been a supporter for many years. He could probably tell you how long that one been. But he teases me a lot. We just love having him around. God bless you, kid, everyone. I've been on the number two for over three, I think. It's been a long time. Let me see you've been hard for you. You tell the Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this special occasion in the name of the Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the food that you have provided for us. And Lord, we thank you for the hands we prepared. And Lord, we ask you to bless and sanctify and allow for your nursing to our body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you, uh, will your team give us directions for getting our meals, please? Doris. Thank you. We're going to go to my table and get a shirt for me. Go with Kelly and we're going to go to the dog. But we're going to go to the back. Thank you so
since the Civil War. And since then, you can trace how that land back here to the present. Uh, land that got where we are was called that original track. My grandmother's father used to live up this hill. Uh, I think it was 150 acres in the beginning. And I think it came to him after slavery. And then it was passed on to my grandmother. And my grandmother passed it on to my father. And then my father and mother passed it on to me and my two brothers. My grandfather, for 25 acres, and he put the charm on him. The charm on the first thing that started to do with him. Everything most of the day came from the land. And my grandmother and my sister and my grand uncle, they would go out there and make those long rows with the hog. And they had, I know they had, they took up a half a bed, a good two acres. And they had some of everything in that garden, I imagine. They had corn, they had peas, they had squash, they had cabbage, they had collards, they had eggplants, they had carrots, they had lettuce. You name it, they had it in the background. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, on my digital extended universe, our local university, Baylor State University, came out better like a movie. We were receiving $30 million to construct two new dormitories.
been quite a journey and it's been um, uh, interesting and, and educational to say the least. Um, so I'm Brian Armstrong, I'm from Fayetteville. Um, graduated from high school in 95, went to a couple years of school in Raleigh and then worked in the restaurant business. Came home in 2002 and I worked in real estate and then in 2016 I went back to Fayetteville State and graduated got my degree in history. Um, so that'll kind of come back around in a, mo in a moment. Um, my dad and my grandfather were home builders um, in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And one of the projects they did was an Deerfield subdivision right up here on 87. Um, they purchased the property, like I said, I believe in the late 70s, early 80s, built the homes, and then I think in the mid-90s they were done building homes and there was about a five acre piece left that was sitting up on Bragg Boulevard. And it was next to the Shell Station uh, for the longest time. And then when I came back in 2002, I knew about the property and I'd asked some folks about it. And they said, yeah, it's, it's a nice piece of property, but there's a cemetery on it. Um, we didn't know the extent of the cemetery and any of the details. Being in real estate development, you often Encounter cemeteries and you know, family plots, and you know you can put a fence around them and build around it. Sometimes, if you know family members want them to be relocated, you can do that also. Um, and we just you know knew it was there and felt when the time came that we would you know address it. Um, fast forward to 2019, and we were approached by Tractor Supply. They were interested in the five-acre parcel. And I believe they submitted some preliminary plans to the town of Spring Lake. And that's when I got a call from Miss Patricia Hickman uh, with Mayor Goblin's office. And she, um, she says, Mr. Armstrong, do you know there's a cemetery on the property? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. She goes, do you know the details? I said, I do not. And she told me it was a cemetery of former slaves and their ancestors who worked on the McDermott plantation uh, close by. And, um, didn't know that, and she said, and there's a woman by the name of Miss Amy Jenkins with the Sand Hills Family Heritage Association that would like to uh, speak with you about it. So um, we met at Mayor Goffey's office and you know, discussed the property, and she uh, gave me a very detailed history of it, um, you know, amongst other things. And, <laughs> you know, one of the things that stuck out was a story she told me um, of a lady named Marge, that Margie, that told her when she was little, she remembered Union soldiers coming through on horseback to her kitchen. And the hook press that were left in the floor. And when she told me that story, it, it kind of you know brought it home and made it clear that, that this cemetery needed to be protected, it needed to be looked after, maintained, brought life so you know it, it could be people could pay their respects and I knew that in the hands of the Samuels Family Heritage Association that that would happen so we went to work figuring out a way to make that happen um, we were under contract with tractor supply so I had to go back to them and let them know what was going on and they agreed to let us separate the two properties um, and we would tractor supply would have there so we the other one over to the uh, uh, Family Heritage Association. Um, and part of that process, I had to go to the engineering firm to get them to separate the properties. And fortunately, the engineer who I called also did a survey of that property in the early 80s when it was bought. And back then, the trees weren't there. It was a lot more clear. And they actually <coughs> notated every single place they believe the grave was, wow. was at. Now there's some headstones out there, but there's a lot of depressions in the ground that do not have headstones. So they counted about 81 what they thought were graves, and they pinpointed them with GPS coordinates. So um, <coughs> luckily they did that because I've asked them to come back out and mark all those locations. 
uh, so that at least we'll know where they're at. Um, but the point of that map was it helped us delineate where the track supply needed to go and where the cemetery property needed to go, so that we weren't overlapping and in any danger of um, cemetery or graves being on the track <coughs> supply property. Um, so I'm here today. I want to present the deed to the board members of the Sandhills Family Heritage Association. <laughs>
but she also works with the Sandy Hope and you will tell you about very often. And we encourage um, parents or grandparents of youngsters, uh, upper elementary to high school. We would love to get them involved in the organization. Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Born. I first got involved with the organization as a vendor at the farmer's market in, I believe, 2015 or 16. And ever since then, I've just been engulfed into what Sand Hills has going on. It really speaks to my beliefs and what I believe that a lot of the youth would be more involved in. And as being kind of in between, you know, the youth and the um, more um, seasoned adults. <laughs> I believe that I, I, I have that honor to be able to get in that position to work with the youth. So as she said, I am the San Jose Youth Coordinator. Um, I will be moving in January, but I still will hold the position virtually. So anyone that may be interested in speaking um, to the youth, I would love to get in contact with you so that you can um, speak with the youth and yes, <laughs> and um, get get to know them and get to um, know what they like so that we can you know pass down that history that Sand Hills um, is so involved in and they need to be involved in it too. Um, we are looking to coordinate with other nonprofits and um, people that have youth groups. We did. Um, coordinate with the Dunn, Millington, and Zion for a while, so we were working with their youth. So we want to continue to do that along with other youth groups in the community. Thank you. I'm going to ask you, they just help me pass some volunteers to pick things out. We had some young people at the market this uh, summer who uh, we call them young entrepreneurs. They have uh, developed an interest in beekeeping. And so in addition to being there as vendors with their parents, they also helped us at the market. So today we want to present their certificates to them. Can she calls your name? Come forward. Lamari <coughs> McDuffie. Doris, excuse me, didn't have my program. Doris, if you will come up, please. Doris again is 
one of our board members. Um, she is in charge of our Health Wise program, but she also has another role. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Doris Lucas, and I am a truly involved in the individual and the Sankofa players. I love the Sankofa players. And unfortunately, today, our director, uh, Evan Prince, is not with us, but I'm going to tell you just a little bit about what we do. First of all, we are very proud of the fact that we're able to preserve our African American history. And we do that through song, song reenactment, and storytelling. And I think the last time we did one was at a festival. And it was really awesome to have the young people. But this is what I'm saying to you today. We need you, we need all the young people. We need you to come out and support this part of our organization. It is very important that we continue to preserve and what we want you to do today is to take a chance. I have a sign-up sheet at the table in the back, and I would like you to give me your name, phone number, and I'm sure our director will get in touch with you and let you know what we'll have in our next meeting. So if you will, please do that on your way out, and we certainly would appreciate it. Meanwhile, uh, we only have a, we had a couple of us here today. And the young man that sang the song of Michael Chase, he is a same culture player. And uh, Mr. Alexander Lucas, would you please stand up? He is a stand up. <laughs> He's a same culture player also. And I think the last performance we were in, I think Buck and I were the ones that were in that. It was at the Church. And it's, um, it was on the Underground Railroad. And we were you say, how do you have, oh, it's a wonderful experience. You get to explore your history. You get to feel really a part of things. So please, sign up and become a part of the same couple of players. We need our actors. We need everybody to come in and join and have a thought. We're getting older. We need young people to replace us. So please. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again on that sheet back here. <laughs> While Andy is coming up, uh, Brother Ali, our distinguished <coughs> uh, drummer, you know, I keep telling you, we're just a band, we're so connected. Do you know that his boys had a lemonade stand? Four, four three brothers? <coughs> Three. Three brothers lemonade, and they used to come to the market and sell the lemonade. <laughs> and so we hadn't seen them in a while, and then they came back this summer. But you know, of course, children grow and they change. I said, oh, three brothers lemonade. But I just wanted you to know that you're part of our family, too. And so are your children. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> And so pleased to see all of you here because if you are here today, that means you have played a very important part in the Sand Hills Family Heritage Association. And you have helped to sustain this organization for over 20 years. Because in January 2022, it will really be 21 years. So we are closer to. 21 years in the uh, business. Uh, we also have the uh, souvenir book. And many of you had put ads in the book. So I want to see a show of hands of all of those who had ads in the book. Just show your hands so we can make sure that you get a book. 
Okay. Can we get a volunteer or someone to come up and pass these out? Hello. <laughs> Now, I'm going. <laughs> now, you need to do all you, all the good things you said about me. You need to repeat. <laughs> I would like to present the Sand Hills Family Heritage Association Distinguished Volunteer Award 2021, Mr. Terry McMillan, who has been the organization's photographer and, and videographer for many years. Thank you. Thank you so much. And he did send someone today to uh, help us in his absence. At this time, uh, I just ask that you stand. There's nothing else. I hope I have not forgotten anything. Tea, the food was delicious. I'm going to ask Reverend Love to come back either he or Mrs. Or the other reverend. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this dish. Fish is a cage, oh God. You have blessed us with heritage, with knowledge. You have blessed us with food, understanding. You have blessed us to be able to fellowship one with another. Father, I ask that you will bless us and keep us and give us safe traveling, God, as we leave this destination. Lord, I pray for everyone that's under the sound of my voice, God, that you would just keep them and let them know, God, this is history that's needed that's necessary and it's knowledge and you're giving us valuable understanding and we thank you for sister jean bless her like only you can god bless the board remember help in everyone that came out from the oldest to the youngest i ask that you would bless them keep us like only you can god until we meet again in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.